14th year at Livingston, uh, at one time Livingston Elementary, now Livingston Middle School, 14 years at the combined two. The coach for the T.W. Hunter Middle School uh, Buccaneers is Ken Janung. His assistant is Ron Helton. He's been with him four years. Coach Melton is assisted by David Peterman, been with him 11 years. Bobby Gore coached eight years. Nikki Franklin has also been there eight years as an assistant. The Wildcats are 8-0 and this year coming into the 1988 bowl game. The first time ever they went undefeated through a regular season game. Through the regular season, they finished nine and one a year ago, winning the Freedom Bowl in Livingston. They beat Oneida down there in the last year's Freedom Bowl. The T.W. Hunter Middle School uh, Buccaneers had a bad year last year. They only won one game, so this is a this is a big thing for them. They're coming off a losing season. The officials tonight are Julian Sampson, the referee, the man in the white hat. Clark Sampson is the uh, line judge, Ray Chitwood, and Bugle Brennan. Yes, that's his real name, Bugle. I didn't believe it either, but that is his name. Now going to the center of the field is the official. We're about five minutes away from kickoff, I believe, so we'll take this time out and come back when they start to go out on the field. Today, on behalf of Charleston County, I'm Now we, on the PA, we have the chairman of the 1988 Tobacco Bowl, Kenny Linville. We'll go to him right now. Welcome to you to the town of Hartford. It's a beautiful day for a ball game, and we're proud to have two undefeated teams. We hope that uh, each and every one of you will enjoy our ball game and hope that you will be willing to come back in the future to play in another one of our bowl games. Uh, at this time, we'll give it back to Jerry. The regular PA announcer in Hartsville is Jerry, Jerry Richmond. And the captains for both teams are now going to the center of the field for the Livingston Middle School Tigers. Number 23 is Matt Swallows. Number 29 is Curtis Hayes. And number 24 is Greg McMahon. For the Hunter Middle School, number 34 is uh, Matt Fisher. Number 10 is Chris Adams. Number 11 is Bernie Anderson. And number 73 is Lee Plummer. They are the captains for the two teams tonight. The Wildcats will be wearing the home white. They are the home team on the scoreboard. Uh, they're dressed in all white with blue numerals. The Hunter uh, Middle School Buccaneers are wearing the burnt orange uh, shirts with the gray football pants with the orange stripes and blue number numerals. The referee has tossed the coin. That is Julian Sampson. Hunter has won the toss. They have elected to receive, so Curtis Hayes will come back out to kick. And now we'll have our national anthem. To be given by Dwight Kipway, pastor of the Hartsville Church of Christ, and remain standing for our national anthem. Our gracious Father in heaven, we thank thee for this beautiful day, for the lovely weather, the beauty of your creation. We're thankful today for this competition, for this game, and for both teams that are here. We pray, Father, that you would be with each player and each coach, with the officials. Help us to have a good game, a game in which all are safe. We pray, Father, that from such games we will learn lessons that will help us in living lives that are acceptable to thee. In Christ's name, amen.
conceded coming in here in this 1988 Tobacco Bowl. The Hunter, uh, Hunter Middle School uh, Buccaneers have won the toss they have elected to receive. They will be on the right-hand side of your screen going right to left in the first quarter. Curtis Hayes is the kicker for uh, the Livingston Middle School Tigers. Back to receive deep for, the, for Hunter Middle School is number 10, Chris Adams, and number 44, William Booker. He's the starting wing back for uh, the Buccaneers. Adams is the starting tailback, so they both should have pretty good speed there back at their 20-yard line awaiting the kick of Hayes. He sets the ball at the 40-yard line. Wildcats coming off of their best season in a long, long time. 8-0 undefeated here, as is Hunter Middle School. They're out of Hendersonville, Tennessee. And uh, we're about ready for the kickoff here in Hartsville, Tennessee. Curtis Hayes to kick. Squib kick on the ground going to the left sideline out of bounds. Or it'll be a five-yard penalty on the play. He'll have to bring it back and kick it from the 35-yard line now. Uh, the Hunter Middle School Buccaneers were city champs in uh, Hendersonville this year. They're down there in a big district with some of uh, the White House uh, people out of Nashville in that group. They played at the Orange Bowl in the uh, beach last year, or two years ago, excuse me, in 1982. They were also undefeated. They're 7-0 this year, beating Gallatin just the other night. The Wildcats 8-0. Their big test came in uh, Sparta, where... Uh, the Wildcats beat them for the first time in nine years, I believe it was. They, uh, that was a big, they've lost to Sparta uh, for nine years in a row, and that had been the one blemish most of the time on their record. So they've got a lot to prove right here. Curtis Hayes to kick, a high kick, spinning end over end. Number 44's got it, William Booker to the 35, where he's tackled by three Wildcats. Fumble, it's on the ground, big scramble for the ball. Wildcats coming out. Clark Mitchell is the center, or is the quarterback. The running backs are Curtis Hayes and Greg McDowell. Matt Swallows is the tight end. The center is Jacob Carwile. Stephen Mosley is starting uh, as a wide out. Coming up to center is number 51 for the Wildcats. Jacob Carwile. Matt Swallows is playing quarterback tonight. Quarterback keeper to the 29-yard line. So Matt Swallows starts the first play of the game at quarterback. They feel that he might play quarterback in high school. But he got in there for one play, and that's all, because Clark Mitchell's coming in now, along with number 73, Brian Turner, an offensive guard. Swallows got about two yards on the carry, so it'll be second down and eight yards to go. Jamie Jacob Carwile to center of the ball. Scotty Hammock, number 72, is one tackle. Number 60, Jason uh, Hancock, is the other one on the left side. The pitch to Swallows in the back. He's down to the 30. He lost two yards. It'll be third down and 10 yards to go. Swallows carried the ball both times for no gain. It lost one yard, they say. It'll be third and nine now. They're using the offensive guards to shuffle in the... Uh, the plays to the Wildcats. Livingston's Jacob Carwile coming up, set up on the right hash mark, power, by, power backfield, wishbone, Swallows and McDonald Hayes. Swallows keeps the ball going around the left end, loot deep in the backfield. He's caught at the 31 yard line. Or it'll be fourth down and about 11 yards to go. I believe he lost another yard. Lost two yards. It is fourth down and 11 yards to go. On defense for the Hunter uh, Middle School Buccaneers is number 34. That's uh, Matt Fisher. Number 50 is uh, Danny Bader. Number 40, Johnny Allen. Number 10, Chris Adams. Number 60, 
is uh, Dennis Vaughn, and we'll get to the other ones right after this play. Greg, uh, Greg McDonald split wide right, high backfield. We got motion in the offensive line, if they call it. Either that or illegal contact on Hunter. The man on Hunter that moved is number 80. And that is uh, Tommy Lucas. He's got a twin brother, Buddy Lucas, that plays. And it is illegal motion. It's on number 83, Johnny McCoin, the tight end for the Wildcats. Wide receiver split in. So they'll lose five more yards, and it'll be fourth down and 16 yards to go. The Wildcats going for it on this fourth down and long yardage because really they've got nothing to lose. This is where Hunter would have had possession had they not fumbled the first uh, kickoff return of the game. A big fourth and 16 play here. The Wildcats probably going to there. I know they've set up in punt formation, back to punt for the Wildcats. It's a low kick short, caught by number 10. Chris Adams up to the 30, inside the 30, down to about the 34-yard line where he's tackled by the Wildcats. Tackle made by uh, number 73 for the Wildcats. That's Brian Turner making the tackle. The Hunter Middle School Buccaneers coming out on offense now for the first time in the ball game. Four minutes, 56 seconds to play in the first quarter. No score. It's first and 10 at the 30-yard line. For Hunter, the quarterback is number 11, Bernie Anderson. He takes the snap, two set behind him. Handoff right up the middle to the fullback. No, no gain. Tackled by number 51, Jacob Carwile. Also on the bottom of the pile was number 66. For the Wildcats, that's Jamie Sales. Matt Fisher was the man carrying the ball. He didn't get it. He gained no yardage, maybe lost a foot or two, so it'll be second down, 10 and a half, maybe 11 yards. The fullback, or the deep backs behind, uh, behind Anderson are Adams, and I can't see the other number. The handoff is to Adams, second back through, up to the 35, breaks a tackle down to the 40, down to the 45, and he's brought down there by number 29, Curtis Hayes for the Wildcats. But he gained about 16 yards on that play. The other man in the backfield with him is number 34. Number 34 is Matt Fisher, who made the, the block that sprung him at about the 33-yard line to, for the big gainer. He gained about 16 yards, did Chris Adams. And it's been a run-oriented game so far. We've not saw a ball put in there by either team. Coming up to take the snap from center is number 11, Bernie Anderson for Hunter. The center is Chad Gilbert, number 51. Anderson takes it, pitches it deep, deep to Adams around the right end. He down to the 50, and inside the 50 to the 42-yard line. Adams Hunter is doing a great job blocking tonight. They've uh, they've not they're just blowing Livingston off the line here early in the game. They're a big team, making big holes for him to run through. On that offensive line is number 53, which is. Uh, We don't have a number 53 listed. Number 73 is Lee Plummer, the center. Number 51. Up under the center is number 10, Chris Adams, to take the snap. Deep drop. Going deep down the right, left sidelines, overthrown. He overthrown his wide out that time, number 35. Brown for the Hunter Middle School Buccaneers. That is uh, Jason Brown, split end out wide. Number 11, the quarterback, Bernie Anderson, overthrown him, led him just a little too far. He was open, had a step on the defense, but the quarterback couldn't lay it out there. It took a perfect throw. Anderson coming up under center to take the snap again. It's second down and 10, no gain on the play. Wildcats in a three-man line showing blitz. Deep pitch. To, uh, to Adams, down to the 40. He's inside the 40 to the 35, where he's drug down by number 44 for the Wildcats, Stephen Mosley. Mosley stopped a long game that time because he had a lot of open field. It'll be third down and about three yards to go. Number 10 is Chris Adams for the Hunter Buccaneers. Adams is getting involved in a lot of the plays. They really like to run him. He's a small back about 5'8", it looks to be, but he's real quick. Bernie Anderson coming up under center. Center is number 51, Chad Gilbert. Gilbert snaps, fakes the handoff, gives it to number 44. Coming around the other 
side. He's, he didn't fool the Livingston defense tackle made by number number 23, Matt Swallows, and also there to help out was number 71, David West. The ball carrier was number 44, William Booker. He came from, he started on the right side, came around on the reverse, coming to the left side, but he didn't fool. Uh, Swallows or uh, David West. They stayed at home, made a good solid hit, and it's now second down, two yards to go. Coming up to take the snap is number 11, Bernie Anderson at the 33-yard line of Livingston, second down and two. And the keep, quarterback keeper, he's got no gain. He's tackled by three, number 33. And there is Chris Bullock, number 73, also in there. Number 73, Brian Turner. And number 70, Michael Slayton also helped on the tackle. A good gang tackling that time. The defense has really tightened up now that Hunter's got inside Livingston territory. It's third down, three yards to go. Quarterback Bernie Anderson coming up to take the snap from Chad Gilbert. Anderson, big third down three, two tight end set, deep pitch. Going around the right side, first down. He got a first down, but just barely. Number 10, Chris Adams. Adams gets the first down on a third and three K. Deep pitch, dangerous play. He got away from number 32, deep in the backfield. Bobby, or Shane Johnson, excuse me. Making the tackle downfield was number 44, Stephen Mosley that time. Johnson had a shot at him in the backfield, but he used his speed to break away, and it's now fourth down. It's first down they should have up there. They didn't move the marker. It's first down and 10, split out. They've got a wide man split left. Short drop, pitches it out. And great play by Curtis Hayes. He read the play all the way. Number 35 was Jason Brown, split wide. Hayes broke on the ball. He saw the call. Knew what was going on, and Hayes just read the ball, made a perfect timing. It was fourth down and seven. It'll be first and 10 Livingston from their own 32 yard line. So Hayes made a, the first big play of the game. Hayes stopping the man on the 32 yard line. Great anticipation on the tackle. Knocking the ball away from Jason Brown. And the Wildcats will take over. Clark Mitchell, quarterback, two tight end set. Hands it off to Bullock. No, Mitchell still got it. Quarterback keeper, he's up to the 34 yard line. And we know that uh, that Mitchell's a tough quarterback because he played the entire third or the entire final three quarters of the Sparta game with a broken collarbone. I'm told he uh, he played that entire game after being hit uh, on a quarterback sneak, something similar to that play there. Mitchell coming back up under center. The center is number 51, Jacob Carwell. High backfield, two tight ends. Hands it off to uh, Chris Bullock, Bullock to the 40, down to the 43-yard line where the tackle's made by number 70 for Hunter. Number 70 is Robert Evans, and now the Wildcat offensive line is opening up some big holes. Coming into the ball game is number 60, offensive guard number 66 is Jamie Sales, number 72 is Scotty Hammock, and number 73, that starting offensive line, along with the center, Jacob Carlisle. And at the end of one, it's nothing, nothing, your score. Wildcats are uh, playing a good game in the first annual 1988 Tobacco Bowl. for yardage he didn't get there it doesn't appear from here Curtis Hayes with the quick hand off the tackle made straight up the middle by the hunter uh, middle of the hunter buccaneer line it's second down now it was first down and 10 yards to go they should have had it it's now second down six yards to go for the Wildcats from the 46 yard line Clark Mitchell the quarterback 
I formation, deep back McDonald, deep back Swallows, number 24, the hand, no, it's Bullock, number 33, the handoff to him, he's inside Hunter territory down to the 46-yard line, where it'll be first down, 10 yards to go, the first penetration of the Wildcats, or the second penetration, the first one resulted in a fourth down play that turned the ball over to the Wildcats, coming in to, over to the Buccaneers, coming into the ball game as number 64 for the Wildcats, that's Michael Hayes, he's an uh, offensive tackle. Number 51, Jacob Carwile leads the offensive team of the Livingston Middle School Wildcats up to the line of scrimmage, which is at the 45-yard line of Hunter. It's first and 10. Mitchell takes the snap. Quick handoff up the middle. Bullock to down inside the 40, inside the 35, down to the 31-yard line, where he's tackled by Hunter Middle School. Number 51. That's number 51, Chad Gilbert. Gilbert is the starting offensive center, also a starting linebacker. Coming into the game, bringing the play in is number 73, Brian Turner. And the Wildcats are mounting an impressive drive here at the start of the second quarter. Your score, nothing to nothing. Coach, uh, Coach David Peterman going out to talk to the Wildcats. We have a timeout on the field. Your score, nothing to nothing, with six minutes, 47 seconds to play. We're back after the timeout with six minutes, 47 seconds to play. The score is still nothing to nothing. It's first down and 10 yards to go for the Wildcats from the 30-yard line of the Hunter uh, Middle School Buccaneers. The Buccaneers uh, had two possessions. They've turned them both over. The first one was a fumble on the opening kickoff. The second turned over on downs. Clark Mitchell, the quarterback for the Wildcats, and now a head of some sun going to warm up this field. Clark Mitchell hands it off to Bullock again. He's at the 30. It's been a little cool here in Hartsville, but a great day for football. Just perfect weather. Now the sun's coming out. May make the passing game a little more difficult. The tackle made once again by Chad Gilbert. Also on that defensive line with him is number 70, Robert Evans. And number 94, Bobby Lucas. Fader, checking out for the Buccaneers. And we've got an injury on the field by the Buccaneers. It's uh, number 50 for the Buccaneers. That's Danny Bader. He's a right tackle on the offense. Starts at uh, right tackle on defense as well. Number 73 coming in to take his place is Lee Plummer. The left tackle. Carwile leads the team up to take the snap. Is Clark Mitchell, the quarterback, eye formation. Short eye, Mitchell hands it off, end around. Greg McDonald to the 30, down to the 25, to the 20, down to the 15, inside the 15, to the 11 yard line, maybe the 10. They came with a little razzle dazzle, the tackle made by number 50 for the Hunter Buccaneers, which is Danny Bader, who had just left the game previously, back in after one play. And the razzle-dazzle work to get it down to the nine-yard line. First down, goal to go. Maybe the eight now, they call it. Call it the six-yard line. It's first and goal from the six-yard line. The Wildcats' first true to, uh, scoring threat of the ball game. Mitchell under center, eye formation again. Hand off to Bulk up the middle. He's down to the five, inside the five to the four-yard line. They're just grinding it out now. First, second down and goal to go from the four-yard line. Wildcats have did this on the ground. They haven't thrown the ball much tonight. Neither team has done a whole lot of passing. The quarterback number 11, Bernie Anderson, for the Buccaneers has, is 0 for 2. Both have been attempted deep uh, patterns. One bro broken up nicely by Curtis Hayes, and Mitchell brings the team back up under center. Jacob Carwile to snap the ball. Mitchell takes the snap, hand off to Bullock. He's, he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Wildcats. They lead 6 to nothing with five minutes and seven seconds to go. They've drawn first blood in this tobacco bowl in Hartsville, Tennessee. The Hunter Middle School team, they're supposed to be able to pass the ball as well. They've not shown that yet. They, they've shown they have a powerful offensive line and a good running attack, but if they get down too much early, they're going to have to show their passing game, and now the Wildcats will probably go for a two-point conversion here. Number 51, Jacob Carwell, the center. Clark Mitchell, the quarterback. Bullock Hayes, and, Mc, and McDonald in the backfield, three power eye set, deep pitch to McDonald around the left end, one man to beat, gets away from him, dives in the end zone. Broke the tackle of number 22. Dirk Maloo for the Wildcats also got away from number 30 down there. For the Hunter uh, Middle School Wildcats, and it's eight to nothing, the Wildcats lead. And uh, coming back to kick,
kick will be Curtis Hayes, scored with five minutes and seven seconds to go. Uh, Greg McDonald going around the left end to convert the two-point conversion, and the Wildcats have got to got what they wanted. They're not as big as Hunter. They need to keep them down, make them try to come from behind so they can't use this power football and grind it out on them. They have to force them to the air and make them... Uh, referee shows he got a pretty good arm there, throwing about 40 yards. Hayes will be kicking off. They're going to make Hunter go to their passing game if they can keep this up, stop them one more time, score another touchdown, maybe get it in the end zone once again, and they'll force them to the passing game, and that'll take Hunter away from their power game. They're a real good power team. Deep back to receive the kick is number 35, Jason Brown, and number 44, William Booker. Good kick by Hayes. It's coming to Brown. Brown makes the catch at the 15. He's up to the 20, up to the 25, up to the 30 to the 31-yard line where he's tackled by number 73 for the Wildcats. Number 73 is Brian Turner making the tackle on the special teams. Wildcats playing, uh, most of their players play on all three units, the offense, defense, and the special teams. Turner staying in. Along with him in there is number 24, Greg McDonald, number 23, Matt Swallows, number 51, Jacob Carwile, number 44, Stephen Mosley. Number 33, Chris Bullock. Number 71, David West. And we'll get the rest of them just after this play. Number 11, Bernie Anderson, the quarterback. Two tight ends set for the, Wild, or the Buccaneers. Neat, quick handoff to the fullback. Number 34 for Hunter. He's stopped by Swallows. Swallows West, McDonald, and Carlisle. All four of them there to make the tackle. Number 34, is Matt Fisher for the Buccaneers for a gain of about one yard. Second down, nine yards to go here in the second quarter. Four minutes to play in the first annual 1988 Tobacco Bowl here in Hartsville, Tennessee. We're at the John Kerr Field on the campus of uh, Hartsville High School. Coming up to take the snap from center is number 11, Bernie Anderson. The center is Chad Gilbert, number 51. Split wide to the left is number 40 for Hunter. Anderson deep drop, sacked. He sacked the pocket collapse. Wildcats got four players in there. And we have a fumble on the play. The ball's on the field. The Wildcats have recovered inside the 30. It'll be first down 10 yards to go. Number 70 in there on the sack, which is Michael Slayton. He made the sack and the recovery along with Curtis Hayes. And number 60 was also in there. For the Wildcats, that's Jason Hammock. That's the second big fumble of the game. Coming back out is number 12, Clark Mitchell. The Wildcats with a big opportunity here, taking over inside the 30-yard line of Hunter. It's first down and 10 yards to go at the 29-yard line. Clark Mitchell to take the snap. Wishbone quick handoff to Hayes. Straight up the middle, he gains one. Fights for yardage, can't get any more. About a yard, but they couldn't bring him down. This bunch is really fighting here. It's eight to nothing. They want to win this, want to finish this season undefeated. He is stopped by uh, Robert Evans for the Hunter Buccaneers, where it's second down, nine yards to go. And we've got an injury timeout, an equipment problem, number 53 for Hunter, having some trouble with his, with his equipment. We don't have a number 53 listed. We'll see if we can find that name out at halftime. He's not listed on our roster. Seems to, be, seems to have it all fixed. It appeared he lost a face mask down in the trenches that time during all the hitting. Jacob Carwell brings the team back up. Clark Mitchell under center. Take the snap. T backfield. Hand off to Bullock, deep pitch down to the 25, inside the 25, breaks the tackle down to the 20, where it's first down 10 yards to go inside the 20 at about the 19-yard line. Great fake by Mitchell. He fooled everybody. Mitchell faked it to Hayes and pitched it with the left hand to Bullock, and uh, there's a big hole there. Hayes did a good job of opening the hole up after, uh, after the fake, so he didn't quit. He went right out and blocked. It's now first down, 10 yards to go from the 19-yard line. Mitchell, the quarterback, tight end is Bullock, is Swallows, excuse me. Also uh, over on this side is Hayes. 
Hayes, the deep pit, deep hand off the bulk. He's inside the 19 down to about the 13 yard line. Or it'll be second down to round four or five yards to go. Wildcats just grinding it out still. They, they've played this ground game the whole game. Mitchell has not took to the air yet. We've not saw his passing attempted. We saw that he can pass. He had a big touchdown to Matt Swallows in the corner of the end zone in the Sparta game. Mitchell T backfield, two tight ends. Takes the snap, had quick pitch back to Bullock. He's around the left end. Stiff arm, can't get away. Does break the tackle down inside the 10-yard line to about the eight, where he's tackled by number 22 and number 70, Dirk Ballou. And number 70 is Robert Evans made the tackle. Bullock did a good job of breaking the initial contact, getting loose from the Hunter Buccaneers, and we've got a timeout with a minute and 10 seconds left to play. It's eight to nothing, the Wildcats lead. And your score is eight to nothing, the Wildcats leading and threatening once again. It's first and goal from the nine yard line of Hunter. Hunter a little slow getting out. Mitchell takes advantage of it, hands it off to Bullock. He's inside the five, down to about the four yard line. Hunter didn't have time to see it. Mitchell did a good job. He now calls another timeout with a minute and two seconds left to play. Your score is once again eight to nothing. It'll be second down and one when we come back. seconds to play in the first half. Clark Mitchell coming back out after the timeout. Wildcats threatening. It's first, second down and goal from the two-yard line. They already have an eight-to-nothing lead. Mitchell showing a lot of poise there. He's the eighth grader, the vet, one of the veterans on this team. They have a lot of eighth graders, a veteran team. Mitchell takes the snap, hands it off to Bullock. He's close but didn't get in. Gained about a yard where it'll be third and goal from the one-yard line. Got two downs to get one yard. The play before that, Mitchell saw that the defense hadn't set up. Called the quick snap, and we've got another timeout. Coach uh, Terry Mountain knows that with 53 seconds left to play, they probably won't get another chance like this in the first half, so there's no need to keep his timeouts. Why keep them and just waste them? You need to make sure you've got the right play called at all times right here because this, is, this could... Uh, be a big step to forcing the Hunter Buccaneers out of their ball game. They appear to be a running team and not truly a passing team. In there for the Buccaneers is number 80, which is Tommy Lucas, number 50. Which is Danny Bader. And after the timeout, coming back out is Clark Mitchell. Coming into the game is number 73, Brian Turner. Going out is number 60, Jason Hancock. Carlisle leads the team back up to the line of scrimmage. Third down and goal from the one-yard line. High backfield, Clark Mitchell, quarterback, hands it off to Bullock. He's in there. Touchdown. Give him six. It's 14 to nothing. The Wildcats with 50 seconds left to play. Mitchell wants to go for two. Coming back in with the play is number 60, Jason Hancock. Coming out is uh, Brian Turner there, the two that shuffles the play in and out. The, li the last time, Greg McDonald took it wide left, scored on the two-point conversion. This time, Bullock straight up the middle, scored the touchdown with 50 seconds to play in the first half. So calling all those timeouts were good. Mitchell to take the snap. Quick pitch over the middle to Hayes. He's in there. It's 16 to nothing. And the first pass Mitchell throws complete, and it's complete in the end zone. And your score is now 16 to nothing with 50 seconds to play. We'll take timeout. Hayes will be kicking for the Wildcats. Curtis Hayes back to kick for the Wildcats with a 16 nothing lead. The Hunter, Lane Buccan the Hunter Middle School Buccaneers are going to have to start throwing the ball now. Hayes uh, kicked down to the 20-yard line where it's caught by number 44, William B Booker. He's up to the 30, uh, past the 30 to the 33-yard line where the tackle's made by Greg McDonald and Matt Swallows. Booker, a good return up inside, up to the 33-yard line. 
Court will be first down and 10. The Buccaneers trailing 16 to nothing. They're going to have to start airing it out here, but they can't really get away from their game plan. They have to keep it simple and uh, just try to overpower the Wildcats. They're bigger than they are and appear to have more size. Number 66, Jamie Sales, a defensive captain, calling the play, calling the defensive set. Dropping back into coverage is number 58 which is Bobby Cantrell. The center for Hunter is number 51, Chad Gilbert. Quarterback number 11, Bernie Anderson. Two-man backfield. Anderson to take the snap. Gives it to the man coming around the left side, number 44, William Bunker. And he is tackled for a gain of about two by Greg McDonald. Got about two, two yards, and that's the end of the first half. Your score is 16 to nothing the Wildcats. the second half, the Wildcats leading by a score of 16 to nothing over the Hunter Middle School Buccaneers. The scoring started with uh, Chris Bullock, a two-yard run in the first quarter with about a minute left to play, made the score, and uh, Greg McDonald converted a two-point conversion after that with, to make the score eight to nothing. Then with 50 seconds to play in the second quarter, uh, Bullock had a three-yard run once again. Bullock scored both touchdowns for the Wildcats. Curtis Hayes caught the two-point conversion. Clark Mitchell's only pass attempt of the first half, which is good for a two-point conversion. But it all started with Curtis Hayes' uh, big fourth down play on the wide receiver, number 35, Jason Brown, when Hayes broke up the pass attempt to him at about the 19-yard line, which would have made it first down and 10 had he caught the ball. But Hayes made a good break on the ball, timed it perfectly to knock it out of his hands just as it got there. The Wildcats are 8-0, uh, as we said at the start of the game. The Bu middle school Buccaneers 7-0. This is Telescript Channel 15. I'm Craig Cantrell along with Jimmy Copeland, Pam Sadler, Wayne Farrell, and David Sadler here tonight. The captains for both teams, number 23, Matt Swallows, and number 11, B Bernie Anderson, out at the middle of the field, along with referee Julian Sampson. Our officials tonight are Clark Sampson, Ray Chitwood, and Bugle Drennan. The Wildcats had the option at the start of the second half. They have elected to receive. They will defend the West goal, so they'll be going right to left on your uh, TV screen tonight. Wildcats leading by 16 to nothing. They are coached by Terry Melton. The Hunter Middle School uh, team is coached by Ken Janong. He's in his second year here at Hunter Middle School. Coach Melton is in his 14th year at Livingston at uh, the elementary school and the middle school. When they uh, incorporated, he stayed on as coach there. Wildcats leading by a score of 16 to nothing. Hunter coming up to kick. This will be the first time they've kicked tonight. They won the opening toss. So we really don't know who the kicker is. Clark Mitchell warming up on the sidelines with number 83, Johnny McCoy, split ends. Kicker appears to be number 80, which is Tommy Lucas. He's got a twin brother plays for these Buccaneers. He's number 94, Buddy Lucas. Lucas, Buddy is a tight end. Tommy is split end, so they both like to get the ball. John Buddy to kick, to deep to receive, Lucas, is number 32. Or number, number 32 for the Wildcats. Hayes on the right side catches the ball. He's up to the 40, inside the 40, to the 45-yard line where he's tackled. Well, he breaks the tackle, gets out to the 50-yard line. That was Hayes on the return. Hayes fumbled, Bullock caught it on the bounce, took it on up to the 50-yard line where he's tackled by Hunter. So both kickoffs have started with a little uh, something strange happening. Hunter fumbled the first one, couldn't recover it. Livingston fumbled the kickoff in the second half. Bullock did recover it, took it on up to the 49-yard line of Livingston where it'll be first down 10 yards to go. They scored on their last possession to make it 16 to nothing. The Wildcats' eye backfield deep man is uh, Swallows. Hayes in front of him. Mitchell to take the snap. Two tight end set, deep hand off to Bullock, that is. Bullock inside the 50 down to the 44-yard line of Hunter. Probably second down, four yards to go for the Wildcats. Wildcats really doing a good job on the ground. They're just overpowering Hunter. Tackle made by Evans for the Buccaneers. Gain of six, seven yards for uh, 
Bullock where it'd be third, second down and three yards to go. Bullock scored both touchdowns for the hunt, for the Livingston Wildcats. Number 51, Jacob Carvile, the center. Clark Mitchell, the quarterback. I said Hayes deep. Mitchell will take the snap, gives it to Hayes. It gains about a yard up to the 40, to, up to the 40 yard line, gained about three Hayes yards where it'll be first down, 10 Hunter yards to go. Tackle made by number 40 for Hunter. And that is Johnny Allen. He's the starting halfback, starting safety, get, getting up there to make the tackle. When the safety starts making the tackle on a second down three, you know they've got the first down because he's got deep, uh, deep coverage, so he has to come up, and they've always got at least three or four yards before they get to him. Jacob Carwile, the center, coming up to snap the ball. Number 12, Clark Mitchell, the quarterback. Tight end is Greg McDonald. Mitchell to take the snap. Wishbone offense, power eye. Mitchell hands it to McDonald in the backfield. He's down to the 35, down to the 30, carries a man to the 30-yard line. Inside the 30 to about the 29. The tackle made by number 34, which is Matt Fisher for the uh, Hunter Middle School Buccaneers. McDonald broke a couple of tackles, getting it down to, to the 35, then just carried a man down to the 30. Power running by... Uh, by uh, McDonald that time, bringing the play in is number 64 for the Wildcats, which is Michael Hayes, a tackle. The Wildcats come up the line of the scrimmage, a four-man defensive line for uh, Hunter Middle School. Everybody in tight, power eye. Mitchell hands it to McDonald once again. He's inside the 30, down to the 25, inside the 25 to the 24-yard line, where the tackle is made by number 80. He's just... Uh, Jim Bob McAllister. No, that's Tommy Lucas. Jim Bob McAllister, McAllister is the backup center. Lucas does the kicking as well. The deep man in this Hunter defense is number 35, Jason Brown. Carwell to bring the cats back up to uh, the line of scrimmage. Clark Mitchell take the snap. Two tight end set. I formation. Mitchell hands it off to Bullock at the 30. At the 20, inside the 20 to about the 19-yard line. Where will be third down. And about two yards to go, third and two for the Wildcats. Big third down play here. They, uh, they were able to score on their last possession, so this is a fourth down uh, fourth down area of the field probably. If they get half of it, they'll probably go for it on fourth down, try to extend this drive, get it in the end zone, make the score 22 to nothing. High formation, Clark Mitchell quarterback. Chris Bullock, deep, uh, deep back, hand off to McDonald, in the round, inside the 20, down to about the 15-yard line, where it'll be first down, 10 yards to go. McDonald on the end around, they faked it to Bullock, going up the middle of the field. The, the old Statue of Liberty type play, hand it to McDonald, coming around the left side. McDonald takes it up the middle of the field, behind the hole that Bullock made. Got the first down, it's first down and 10 yards to go from about the 15-yard line of Hunter on the opening drive of the second half. Wildcats leading 16 to nothing. This is Telescript Channel 15 in Livingston, Tennessee. Clark Mitchell, the quarterback. Man split wide right, Mitchell deep drop, hands it off to Bullock. He's inside the 15, down around the 10 yard line. They say fumble. It is a fumble and it's recovered by Hunter. Bullock dropped the ball. He scored two touchdowns, though. They can't get on to him about that. He's had a great game. And it's his deep inside the Hunter territory, so they've got almost the length of the field to go. 90 yards to the other end zone before they can put any points on the board. Four minutes, 20 seconds to play. It's 16 to nothing, the Wildcats, and they've got a long way to go. Hunter does. Hunter uh, is coached by Ken Janung. He's assisted by Ron Helton. The quarterback is number 11, Bernie Anderson, bringing him up to center. Two men in the backfield with him. T formation. Anderson takes the snap, pitches it to Chris Adams around the left side, across the 10, up to about the 15-yard line where he's tackled by number 51, Jacob Carwell, number 23, Matt Swallows. Adams gained about four, four and a half, maybe five yards on the play where it'll be second down, five yards to go for the middle school Buccaneers. Wildcats coached by Terry Melton, assisted by David Peterman, Bobby Gore, and Nicky Franklin. It'll be second down and six yards to go for the Hunter Middle School Buccaneers trailing 16 to nothing. First, second down and six 
from about the 14-yard line. The quarterback is Bernie Anderson. Deep back behind him, number 34. The handoff goes to him. He's up to the 14 where he's met head-to-head -head by the Wildcats. Who was that? It was number... Number 73 in the bottom of the pile, I believe. Number 71, David West. David West was the man that just met him head to head, drove him back, and wouldn't let him gain but about a yard. It'll be third down, four yards to go. Bernie Anderson, the quarterback. Third and four, big play right here if they can force a fourth down situation. Wildcats switching their defense, four, three line. Deep pitch to Adams. Adams over the right side, up to the 25, down to the 30, down to the 35, to the 40, to the 45. Inside the 45 to the 46-yard line. Where he's tackled by number 66 for the Wildcats, Jamie Sales. Adams broke about a 28-yard run that time on the third down play. It'll be first down and 10 for the Hunter Middle School Buccaneers. And they've got this offense going now. Big run to break this second half open here. It's first down and 10 at the 46-yard line. The Buccaneers trailing 16 to nothing. Number 66, Jamie Sales, able to force him out of bounds. Before he could get on down the field, Bernie Anderson brings him back up. Adams in the backfield once again, along with number 34, Matt Fisher. Quick pitch over the, over the middle, number 35. Jason Brown, who couldn't hold on. He's the one that got the fourth down uh, throw knocked away from him to stop the first drive that they had inside Livingston Territory. Curtis Hayes defending him once again. They met here twice. Hayes come up on the better end of it both times. Bernie Anderson brings him back up under center. Anderson not had a good night throwing the ball. He's 0 for 3, or a good afternoon. Anderson drops the ball, fumble. Wildcats have it. Recovered by number 33, Chris Bullock, the starting fullback. And so the Wildcats turn it around. They, got, they gave up the fumble. Bullock did, but he got in there to recover the one defensively, and he's played a whale of a ball game. That's Bullock. He's the starting fullback on the offensive line. Let's get them in right here quickly. Number 66, Jamie Sales. Number 72, Scotty Hammock. Number 60, Jason Hancock. Number 73, Brian Turner. The center is number 51, Jacob Carwile. The, the deep backs are Curtis Hayes, Greg McDonald, and Chris Bullock. They all see a lot of time. And number 23, Matt Swallows is a tight end. Clark Mitchell, the quarterback, and we have a timeout on the field. With timeout, your score is 16 to nothing. And after the timeout, your score is 16 to nothing. The Wildcats, after a big turnover, it's second down and 10 yards to go at the 41-yard 40 yard line of the Hunter Buccaneers. Buccaneers had a big opportunity after breaking a 28-yard fumble or a 28-yard run. The quarterback couldn't take the snap. Fumble, deep pitch, Mitchell to McDonald. McDonald to the 40-yard line, inside the 35, down to the 30, where he's horse collared by number 80. Tommy Lucas. Lucas made a great one-handed tackle to stop McDonald. He'd have got about five more yards if Lucas hadn't got him. But Lucas just reached out, grabbed him by the shirt, shirt collar, and drug him down. McDonald, a good run, though, picked up about seven, eight yards on the run. Call it nine. It's second down, one yard to go. Lucas made a great tackle, and that's the end of the third quarter. Your score, 16 to nothing. The officials calling the, the official timekeeper out onto the field. That's Bugle Brennan, the official timekeeper, along with Ray Chipwood, Clark Sapson, and Julian Sapson, the referee. There are there is some time left in the third quarter. Your score is 16 to nothing. The Wildcats leading. They apparently are going to keep the time on the field, which I'd like to say thank you to them for that large amount of help they're going to give me because without the scoreboard I'm lost at times it's second down and about a yard to go and they are they have turned the clock off time will be kept on the field so we don't really know how much time there is left it's second down and one yard to go Mitchell takes the snap hands it to Hayes Hayes first down inside the 30 down to the 25 fights for yardage down to the 24 where he's tackled by number 73 Lee Plummer. 
Plummer made a good tackle. Hayes fighting for yardage. Plummer wrapped his ankle, couldn't get him driving, brought him down. It's now first down and 10, the Wildcats at the 24-yard line. This is Telescript Channel 15. I'm Craig Cantrell in Hartsville, Tennessee, the John Kerr Field on the campus of uh, the Hartsville High School team. They've won two state championships on this field, so this is a good place to play ball. Clark Mitchell, the quarterback, eye formation. Deep behind him is Swallows, I believe. The pitch, it's Bullock around the right end, is down to the 20, inside the 20 to the 15, breaks the tackle down to the 10-yard line, where he's brought down by number 35 and number 51. He's tackled by number 35, which is Jason Brown and number 51, Chad Gilbert, there to help on the tackle. Oliver, number 53, was also there. And we've got a flag on the play. We didn't see what it was. Referee Julian Sampson walking it off. It's a big penalty, about 15 yards. We got a clipping on the Wildcats, a legal block below the waist, which brought back a big, uh, big run by Bullock. And once again, the clock is malfunctioning. They don't have a horn, they have a siren here. And we, uh, they've stopped play. Bullock, or Jacob Carwell, bring, brings the Wildcats back up to center. Clark Mitchell, the quarterback. It's second down and about 25 yards to go, so Mitchell will probably have to throw it here. No, he doesn't. Hands it off to Hayes. He's down inside the 30, down to the 25. Hayes to the 20, where he's tackled. Tackled by who is that? He won't turn around, number 22. Dirk Ballou made the tackle, but after Hayes had picked up about 18 yards, where it'll be second down, seven, seven yards to go. Hayes on a big run straight up the middle. Everybody was looking past on a first and 25. Mount, Coach Terry Mountain called the inside draw to Curtis Hayes. He did his job. He picked up about 18 yards, and now Jacob Carwell and quarterback Clark Mitchell will bring, uh, bring his team up to center. And that is the end of the third quarter. Your score, 16 to nothing, the Wildcats. And we're back for the start of the fourth quarter in the first annual Junior Tobacco Bowl of 19, in 1988. The Wildcats leading by a score of 16 to nothing. Clark Mitchell, the quarterback, pair eye backfield, second down, seven yards to go. The handoff to McDonald. He's inside the 30, down to the 15, inside the 10, down around the three-yard line where it'll be first down, goal to go. McDonald breaking tackles all the way down through there. The tackle made by Dirk Ballou for the middle, uh, or the middle school Buccaneers. McDonald with a great run. He got it down about the two-yard line where it'll be first down goal to go for the Wildcats. And they've shown they can get about two yards on about every play. This offensive line doing a great job. Jacob Carwell, the center, leading them. Matt Swallows, the tight end, number 71. David West, number 60. Jason Hancock, number 72. Scotty Hammock, and number 66. Jamie Sale blowing people off the line. And there's Greg McDonald finishing it off. He gets it in the end zone. Touchdowns. Wildcats, McDonald scores with about a minute gone. In the fourth quarter, that's now 22 to nothing. The Wildcats leading and pitching a shutout going into the fourth. And that's exactly what Coach Melton wanted. Now the, the Hunter Middle School players have got to start passing, and they don't look too prolific in their passing game. Split wide right as McDonald watch for the slant. Eye backfield. Mitchell keeps it. He's looking for McDonald in the end zone. Pitches it over to Bullock. Bullock drops it. Can't hold on. A little low. A little below his knees. He was open, but uh, Mitchell put it just a little too low for him. Hit him right about the knees. Bullock couldn't pull it in, but it's still 22 to nothing. 22 to nothing. The Wildcats leading Hunters. Middle school Buccaneers. And the Wildcats really showing a lot of poise here. They're, uh, they're just taking, they had that big 15-yard penalty, which really looked, to, appeared to put them in a hole deep. But uh, Coach Terry Melton called that draw to Curtis Hayes when everybody was looking past. He broke it for 18 yards to get the big, uh, 
Big gain on the play, making it a second down, seven yards to go. And now Hayes is up there to kick. Chris Bullock unable to hold on on the two-point conversion. They scored twice on that, McDonald converting one, Hayes converting the other, and Bullock scored the only two touchdowns they've had, or two of the three touchdowns they had. McDonald had the other one to open up the fourth quarter. Hayes high kick down about the 25, caught by Adams. Adams up to the 35, where he's tackled by number 58 for the Wildcats. Number 58 is Bobby Cantrell. Good open field tackle. Just wrapped him up, got those arms around his waist, couldn't let him drive, brought him right down at the 34-yard line. Where will be first and 10 Buccaneers trailing 22 to nothing to the Wildcats. Coach Terry Mountain feels that this is down there uh, really intently watching this game. He wants them to stop them here and shut this team down. They want, he wants them to hold them to no, uh, no points. It's now 22 to nothing. We've got a timeout on the field. Timeout called by Hunter Middle School with timeout. Your score is 22 to nothing, Wildcats. Missouri. After the timeout, the Hunter Middle School Buccaneers trailing 22 to nothing. They want to get some offense mounted here, try to get back into this ball game. Quarterback is number 11. Bernie Anderson takes the snap, pitches it deep to Adams. Adams up to the 35, across the 35 to about the 36, where he's tackled by number 66, Jamie Sales, and the Wildcats have caused another fumble. The recovery by Matt Swallows, and that might just do it right there. They can, they can possibly run out the clock with this drive. Get a couple of first downs there at the 35-yard line. The Wildcats trail leading 22 to nothing. They haven't trailed in this ball game. The Hunter Middle School Buccaneers coming into here 7 and 0. The Wildcats 8 and 0 looking to extend this and they're looking to run out the clock. Right here the Buccaneers a little slow getting that final man on the field Mitchell to throw here. Deep drop. He's hit as he throws it. Attempted to Swallow. Swallow goes up. Can't nobody can catch it. Almost caught. Down there by one of the Buccaneers, Swallows had it in his hands, knocked it away. Number 40 for the Buccaneers, Johnny Allen, had a shot at it, couldn't hold on to it. And that's the first pass other than the two-point conversion, which doesn't count on stats that uh, Mitchell has missed tonight. Buccaneers in a prevent defense type. Now, I don't think they did, they expected Mitchell to throw it. They did a good job getting two men down there West Wall as he almost came up with it, just couldn't hold on. Went right out of his hands. Clark Mitchell on a second down, 10 yards to go. Take the snap from center. Two men in the backfield with him. Statue of Liberty hands it off to McDonald. He's inside the 40, down about the 35-yard line. Where to be second, third down to about five yards to go. Tackle made by number 63, Brian Hurst. That's exactly what it was, the Statue of Liberty. Number 12, Clark Mitchell faked the pass. McDonald just waited on him. And uh, as he brought the ball back down, handed it to McDonald. McDonald went around the opposite end as to where he was looking, tried to fool the defense. They did a fair job, got about three yards. It's third down, seven yards to go for the Wildcats. But now what they're really concerned about is the clock. They're really chewing up the clock. The scoreboard here is malfunctioned, so we don't know how much time there is left. Clark Mitchell to take the snap from center. One man back with him, quick pitch over the middle to Hayes. He's got it first down. Inside the 30, down about the 28-yard line, where the tackle is made by number 70, Robert Evans. Mitchell came up the line, saw nobody had Hayes covered, called the quick pitch, and uh, Hayes just broke it inside. Mitchell with the quick hitter got it to him. He, he maintained his feet, kept control, got the first down, where it's now first down and 10 yards to go, and that may have done it. That could end the ball game on this drive. We don't know how much time there is left. As we said, the clock has malfunctioned, but we do know it's 22 to nothing and first down and 10, the Wildcats. Everything going in their favor. I formation handed off to Hayes inside the 30, down about the 24-yard line, where he's tackled by number, number 51 which is Chad Gilbert along with Oliver on the Buccaneers to make the tackle. They're still playing pretty inspired defense, but it's a long mountain to climb. It's 22 to nothing. The Wildcats leading. Jamie uh, or Jacob Carwell to bring them up to center. Split wide right is Matt Swallows. 
Tight end on this side of the field, Greg McDonald, the flanker. Mitchell takes the snap, hands it to Bullock up the middle. He's in the open field, down about the five, inside the five to the one. Touchdown, Bullock. Nobody expected him as in, it was uh, handed to a... Mitchell looked this way, handed it to Bullock, going left, straight up the middle. Nobody got a hand on him. He cut back right at about the 10-yard line, and he was in there untouched. That makes it 28 to nothing. Bullock's had a big night. He scored all three touchdowns. The only bad play that he's had, that he, uh, he dropped the two-point conversion, but to give him his due, it was at about the knees when he uh, made the attempt. He's had a great night tonight, Two touch, three touchdowns, all three. Or three out of the four, Greg McDonald scored one to open the fourth quarter. Bullock taking this one in from about the 15. The Wildcats now going for a two-point conversion. Your score, 28 to nothing. In the first annual Tobacco Bowl, junior Tobacco Bowl, they had the senior Tobacco Bowl when the high school played, but when they started the playoff picture, it uh, phased the bowl games out. Uh, Mr. Kenny Linville told us uh, he's the chairman of this bowl. The Kiwanis Club here in Hartsville sponsors this. We'd like to thank them for uh, all the help they gave us setting up and everything. We've got a timeout on the field called by uh, Beach. They're trying to set up a defense to stop this two-point conversion. The white, we had an injury out there. Number 22 appears shaken up. That's Dirk Ballou. He's had a good night, made several tackles. The offense for, Hart, or for uh, Hunter Middle School just hasn't been able to get on track. Number 12, Clark Mitchell to take the snap. Jacob Carlisle, the center. Hayes and Bullock behind him. Split wide right as uh, Swallows. McDonald, the tight end on this side. Mitchell keeps it, sprinting right. Got pressure. Down in the corner of the end zone, overthrown, attempted to Matt Swallows. He, uh, he just uh, threw it a little too high for him out of the corner of the end zone. The middle school Buccaneers had a lot of pressure on him. Two men coming at him, one from behind, one in front. But the score is 28 to nothing. The Wildcats to kick. The Wildcats won last year in the bowl they played in. They play in the Freedom Bowl down in Livingston. They beat Oneida. The coaching staff for Livingston, Coach Terry Mountain, the head coach, David Peterman, Bobby Gore, and Nikki Franklin, the assistants. As we said, uh, the middle school Buccaneers were the city champs in Hendersonville. They just haven't been able to get their offense on track in this game. The Wildcats' uh, turnovers have been a good, uh, big, uh, big uh, problem for them. They've had three or four fumbles here on the offense, one on the kickoff. Finally get that 11th man out there. That was the delay. Curtis Hayes to do the kicking. He's had a good night uh, on the ground. He caught the two-point conversion. Hayes to kick. Keeps it on the ground, going towards the left sideline. Caught over there by one of the Buccaneers at about the 44-yard line. He's number 40. Johnny Allen makes the catch. He's the starting halfback deep to receive. That time was number 44, William Booker, and number 35, Jason Brown. Uh, Johnny Allen took a big risk that time. He had to go to the ground to catch the ball. Had he had another fumble there, it would have took away the one uh, final, probably the one final scoring opportunity that the Buccaneers have. As we said, we don't know how much time is left in this game, but the score is 28 to nothing with uh, the Buccaneers having possession at their own 40-yard line, 41-yard line, first down, 10 yards to go. The quarterback, Bernie Anderson, to take the snap. Two men behind him, Chris Adams, one of them. He broke a big run, big rush. Uh, Anderson got it complete out here on the flats to number 35, Jason Brown, down to the 50-yard line where he's tackled by Curtis Hayes and Jacob Carwell. Big rush by the Wildcats by Shane Johnson. Anderson did a good job avoiding that. He found uh, Jason Brown wide open out here at uh, about the 48-yard line, takes it on up to the 50 before he's tackled by Carwell and Hayes, where it is now first down and 10 yards to go inside the Wildcat territory at the 49-yard line, but the clock's still running, and it's still 28 to nothing, three-man line. Anderson to take the snap. Fumble, he's dropped it again. The Wildcats are there. We'll see who's got it. Anderson recover. He recovered. He lost about four yards on the exchange. He had trouble uh, had trouble earlier with an exchange from the center. That's the second one. He's bobbled. 
He dropped it at about the 48-yard line, so a loss of about four yards. It's second down and 14 yards to go for uh, the middle school Buccaneers, and now they're going to have to pass again. The last pass they attempted was complete to uh, Jason Brown about the 50-yard line. And now uh, the fumble once again has been a problem for them. Bernie Anderson fumbling the exchange from center. Chad Gilbert, Gilbert to snap once again. Anderson to take the snap. Two men behind him. Anderson keeps it. Option pitches out to number 80 down to the 50, inside the 50 to the 40, inside the 40, down about the 38-yard line where he's tackled for a first down. Number 80 is Tommy Lucas with a run into option. That time the quarterback, Bernie Anderson, kept it till the very last possible instant. Pitched it down to uh, out to Lucas. Lucas takes it down inside the 40 to about the 38-yard line where it'll be first and 10 for the Buccaneers. And as we said, we don't know how much time is left on the clock. The official keeping it is Bugle Brennan. The quarterback for Hunter is Bernie Anderson to take the snap. One tight end, split wide left. We have a receiver, quick pitch over the middle, knocked down by Swallows, almost intercepted, great play. Split out wide left, one on one. It was number 40, Johnny Allen. Uh, Anderson decided to go over the middle to Lucas. Swallows just put his hand up and knocked it away. Almost had maintained control of it to get the interception. It's now second down, 10 yards to go from the 38 yard line. Now with two minutes left to play, the clock is the clock is stopped on the incomplete pass. So we've got two minutes to play. They've notified both sidelines. Second down, 10 yards to go. Bernie Anderson, the quarterback. Wildcats showing blitz. They come. Number 66 in there to get the sack. Along with number 32, number 66 is Jamie Sales and number 32, Shane Johnson. They sent six men that time. The Buccaneers didn't have enough men to block them. Sales and uh, Sales was the first man to get there. Johnson came in to clean up, and uh, the all-out blitz worked. That'll make it third down and about 16 yards to go, and the clock is running now. So we're under two minutes. Wildcats leading 28 to nothing in the first junior tobacco bowl here in Hartsville, Tennessee. Quarterback is number 51, Chad Gilbert, or the center is number 51, Chad Gilbert. The quarterback is number 11, Bernie Anderson. Anderson to take the snap. Blitz once again. Sales is back there again. Bullock got him. He's sacked at the 45-yard line. A big loss. Lost about 15 yards. And the Wildcat defense is fired up. They're just coming at every play. It's now going to be fourth down and about 30 yards. And the Wildcats will probably come again because they know he's going to have to pass and they don't want him to get any points on the scoreboard. The Wildcats, the last two times they've blitzed. Number 66, Jamie Sales, coming right up the middle, has been the setup man. Number 32, Shane Johnson, cleaned up the first time. Number 33, Chris Bullock, got him the next time. But Sales has been the big man right up the middle. And they're not showing the blitz now. Yes, they do. Sales coming up the middle. Bullock on the outside, McDonald on the left. Anderson takes a snap. Sales is in there again. He's after the quarterback, Anderson. Anderson gets away up to the 50, inside the 50, to, to about the 49-yard line of Livingston where he stopped, and the Wildcats will take over on downs. At the, at the, the Buccaneers 50, at the Buccaneers 49-yard line where the Wildcats will take possession. And right here, all they're trying to do is just run out the clock. There can't be much time left. We're under a minute, I know, but the, the clock has, has uh, tore up here, and we don't know how much time is left. The quarterback, Clark Mitchell, that's run down the entire starting team. They played a great game. Clark Mitchell, the quarterback. Jacob Carwell, the center. Jamie Sales, the guard. Scotty Hammock, the offensive tackle. JC, Jason Hancock, the guard. Ryan Turner, the starting offensive tackle. And that's the end of the game. The Wildcats winning. They finish 9-0. Undefeated. Let's finish up this starting lineup. Get them all in. Johnny McCoy, number 83. Stephen Mosley, number 44. Matt Swallows, number 23. Chris Bullock, number 33. Curtis Hayes, number 29. Greg McDowell, number 24. Michael Slayton, number 70. David West, number 71. And Matt Dillon, number 65. And we hope to talk to Coach Terry Melton in just a few moments. We'll be back in just a moment. 
The Livingston Middle School Junior Wildcats winning the first annual uh, Hartsville Tobacco Bowl Junior Tobacco Bowl on the field right now is Kenny Linville, the Kiwanis Club sponsor. We'll go to him right now. He's going to present the trophy to the Wildcat. to both teams. The Hunter Middle School Buccaneers finished with a record of 7-1 in 1988. Nothing to be ashamed of. The Junior Wildcats finished 9-0 undefeated for the first time in their history under Coach Terry Melton. They finished 9-1 last year, so they've improved on that mark. They didn't play hardly as many games. I believe a couple of teams canceled on them. So they didn't get as many in. We hope to get Coach Terry Melton up here to talk to us after his big undefeated season. He's down with his team right now in the middle of the celebration. Wildcats really inspired by this victory. And I believe all of Coach Melton's still a little quick, but they got him the second time around. And he's that's the happiest weapon he's ever got. It's 28 to nothing. The final score, the junior Wildcats defeat the middle school Buccaneers. And they're really happy out there on the middle of the field. This is a veteran team. They've got, I believe, 16 eighth graders, so they're gonna lose the heart of this team. But it's been a great season and one they won't soon forget. This is Telescripts Channel 15. I'm Craig Cantrell along with Pam Sadler, Jimmy Copeland, David Sadler, and Wayne Farrell. We still hope to get the coaches up here to talk to us. When he gets finished with his team right now, we'll take time out and see if we can get him to come up here. With me are two of the coaches for the Junior Wildcats. Hello, coaches, and congratulations on your big win. Oh, thanks, Pam. It was, uh, it was just great. You know, we played well, and I just uh, feel real good about it. Well, thank you, too, and uh, I think all the thanks go to the boys for the, you know, just a great job they did, and the, the fans and uh, all the supporters in, in Livingston. The, it's, just, it's just a terrific game for us. Well, I know it's a thrill for you, and I'm, I'm, I'm just proud to be here to see this. I know last year you had a, a tremendous record, and this year, what a record. Yes, uh, of course, we're undefeated, and, uh, you know, uh, it's the first time in 14 years that I've been working with it. Maybe the first time since we started the football program back in 1955, and, and uh, you know, it's just, it's just great. All right, I know that at one time the Tobacco Bowl was for a high school, and now you've got it into the junior high. Do you know a little bit about that? I think I heard a little history on it this week that uh, Coach Swallows, I think, was one of the first teams to play in the Tobacco Bowl, 
and uh, we're, we're just glad to come down here. I think it's one of the biggest bowls in, in the state for uh, elementary programs, and we were just glad to get an invitation to it. Well, I think it's terrific that you're here. Also, uh, of course, we're from a small town and everything, but we look great. Yes, we did. Uh, you know, of course, uh, uh, four coaches uh, going down in Skeleton uh, had scouted uh, uh, Hunter, and we pretty well knew what they were doing. I think our guys did too, and uh, we, you know, we proved it on the field. Well, I knew you were going to take this ball game, but I didn't know you were going to really take it. I, I didn't either. We kind of got off to a slow start, and uh, I think about midway though through the first quarter, we just, just you know, we just kind of dominated from there on out. Our, uh, our, our hitting and our line blocking and our running backs, we just kind of uh, got things clicking that, that second quarter, and we never stopped. You know, I didn't see any flags. Uh, we had one. We had one penalty, a five-yard penalty for a legal procedure, I believe. And, uh, you know, uh, it was a well-played ball game. The kids, uh, they hit hard. Our kids hit hard. You know, we had some, uh, they have a 220-pound fullback out there, and you have got to hit him hard to put him on the ground. So it was just a great hitting football game. Well, again, I want to congratulate both of you, and I hope to talk to those other two coaches if they can quit signing autographs over there with all the, the people. And please give our congratulations to your boys. We're proud of them. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Now I have the other two coaches of this junior Wildcat team. What a win, huh, Coach Gore? Oh, it's great, Pam. Uh, we had scattered them twice. And today it was um, not so much our job as coaches, but our job as teachers. And I think we taught our boys well. On um, everything that Hunter did, um, we kind of suppressed. And uh, I'm proud. I'm just tickled with that. What about you? Oh, I loved it. I, <laughs> it thrilled me. I told Coach Gore in the locker room a while ago, I think it's, it's me, thrilled me more than beating Sparta. I mean, Sparta was a tremendous win, but this, to me, it was wonderful. They, like Coach Gore said, kids were ready. All they had to do was execute. A couple of big plays is all they got. We were ready for everything else. You were prepared. Uh, it showed on the field. It really did. And like I told the other coaches, I knew you were going to win. I had that faith, but I didn't know you were going to really win like this. This was a tremendous victory for you. Probably surprised us too, Pam. Uh, really, uh, the margin of victory. We watched them play White House. And this Hunter team is a good team. And uh, we watched them play White House, and and they didn't look so good. Then we watched them play Gallatin. And anytime anybody plays Gallatin at any level, you better be ready. And this group beat Gallatin, and they gained their respect last Tuesday night in a hurry. But we uh, we had seen them play twice. And when you do that, you're, and I've put down every offensive play that they ran in two games. And we broke those down, and, uh, and today, except for two plays, uh, our defense just executed exactly what we'd shown them that Hunter had done, and so we won it. Uh, we did. The uh, defense was great. Uh, our offense, uh, Coach Gore and Coach Spreamer had the offense very ready. They, uh, uh, they knew, we knew that their defense was going to be up in the line of scrimmage. And one, two good blocks, every play is all it takes. And that's what they did. Two, three good blocks, five or six yards of whack, three good blocks, touchdown. And that's what happened. Great day. It's a great day, Pam, for Livingston football. That's right. That's right. You know, uh, our program over the years, we've been together, This, the four of us have been together 10 years. And we've had some good teams, and we've had, uh, I think this is a great team. I think last year we had a great team. And in about 10 years ago, we had a couple of uh, really good teams. And then through the middle there, uh, we had uh, some days that weren't hard as good as this one. And I just hope all these boys, we have 18 eighth graders, and I just um, pray to God that they'll all go on to Livingston Academy, participate, and um, four years down the road, we'll see a state championship. Well, they, you've got the material out there, and I want to thank all of you coaches for what a good job you do with the Junior Wildcats. I want to thank you for everybody else, and especially for Telescripts. We've enjoyed covering your games and being with you and seeing them play. They're a great bunch of kids, and uh, we want to congratulate you. Well, that uh, Telescripts means a lot to us, too. You know, I have that at home, and uh, it means a lot to us. I've watched the Sparta game several times, and I'll watch this one a whole bunch. And it means a lot to our program, a lot more than everybody really uh, probably understands the support and the coverage that you guys give us. And it's, it's really helped us. We appreciate it.
Well, we've had great fans this year. I mean, to hear today, uh, we thought we'd be outnumbered. I think we outnumbered them. Uh, this is the first time, like Coach Corr said, in 10 years that uh, we've been involved in together that uh, we went undefeated. And I think it's probably the first time in the history that it's been undefeated. And it's just... I can say I'm thrilled to death. I'm still shivering. I don't know if I'll get over it for a while. <laughs> well, we have uh, seen a game that'll go down in history. We sure have. These kids will. Well, they'll always remember it. You know, we told them uh, just before we came on the field that it'll be 32 minutes of football action on the field that they'll remember for a lifetime. And I told them if they went out today and wouldn't get caught up in winning and losing, but just play basic block and tackle, run and catch, football for 32 minutes would be the winners at 10. And I think the boys believed us. And uh, we're lucky to have a, a good group like them come along. Well, again, congratulations. Congratulations to the whole team and the coaches. And thank you for an excellent program that you have for Overton County. Thank you. We, we appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye. We're gone. We're gone. And there... And and then, once again, back on Telescript Channel 15, this is Craig Cantrell along with Pam Sadler, Jimmy Copeland, and Wayne Farrell. We'd just like to one more time mention, meant, like to mention everybody that was involved in this. First of all, we'd like to mention the parents because their job is real big in this. They have to bring the kids to the practice every day and get them home. The coaches, Terry Melton, Coach uh, David Peterman, Bobby Gore, and Nikki Franklin, the assistants, and the players, Clark Mitchell, Jacob Carwile, Jamie Sales, Scotty Hammock, Jason ha Hancock, Brian Turner, Johnny McCoin, Stephen Mosley, Matt Swallows, Chris Bullock, Curtis Hayes, Greg McDonald, Michael Slayton, David West, Matt Dillon, Bobby Cantrell, Shane Johnson, Jacob Shipley, Andy Parsons, Johnny Poston, Mark Walker, Stacy England, Michael Hayes, Greg Brown, Jason Copeland, Scotty Scantlin, Noel Rich, James Robbins, Shane Davis, James Allen, and the managers, Danny Poston, Chris Duke, and Charlie Huddleston, the 1988 Tobacco Bowl Junior Champions in Hartsville, Tennessee. Way to go, guys.